Hey again, guys. Do you know what I like to do when I get home from visiting my hometown? I like to look at some baseball cards. I got the opportunity to go back home. I haven't been back there in many years. And uh, I took a little tour uh, down memory lane. Got a little nostalgic. I thought I'd share with you guys. I um, went back to the uh, fire hall where I used to go to the flea market as a kid. And uh, this is the, uh, the entrance way to it. This is the fire hall. And I went and saw the bike path. Um, well, it's now a bike path. I, I went to see the dirt path. We used to walk to the flea market and walk downtown. And they turned it into a paved bike trail. And this is the, uh, well, this was the exit where we would come out uh, and the entrance when we would go home. And this is where the old newsstand used to be. And one of these homes is where George Blanda grew up. I was in his house one time uh, meeting his brother, but I can't remember which specific house it is, but it's one of these on this row. So it was nice to get home and reminisce. Now I wanted to talk to you about how to build a vintage baseball card collection or any sport, how to, how to build a vintage collection. And I'll share with you a little bit of a strategy that, that I did when I got back into collecting in 2014. And uh, bear with me for a moment because I think I need to explain something to you before I explain uh, how I uh, acquired cards because it's kind of the basis, the same philosophy. And it is how I've acquired money. Now I've always, I've always uh, believed that you should pay yourself first. You know, when you get money, you pay the utility bills, you pay your credit card bills, you pay your car bill, you pay your insurance, your water, your, you know. I would always pay myself something first. And, you know, when I didn't make a lot of money, even if it was $25, every pay, I would pay myself first. And I would invest that money when I got enough. When I got enough to buy uh, shares, um, you know, I'd either an ETF I'm not a mutual fund fan because they take so much in fees, but I buy an ETF or I would buy stock and I would buy dividend paying stocks so that my money would grow and compounded interest would happen. And so every pay, whatever I could afford, that's what I did. And if I got any extra money or I got a bonus or something like that, I would take a third and put it to debt. I would take a third and invest it and I would take a third and have some fun with it. Uh, so that was, you know, how I've, uh, how I've acquired uh, the money that I have and extra income. And so I kind of took that philosophy when I got back into cards in 2014 and I wanted to start building up my vintage cards. I wanted to start getting more e-cards and tobacco cards and T206 and T205. And I took a certain amount of money. So I figure, okay, let's say that I have, uh, I have the money that I put away in my savings, which is going to earn me more money. And then I took a second stipend just for my card collection. Obviously, it was part of my disposable income. And when you take this money and it's part of your disposable income and you're not racking up credit cards or anything like that, uh, you're not uh, sacrificing uh, anything important. You take this stipend, you really don't miss it. That's the amazing thing. If you take something right off the top, you just get used to having a little bit less uh, money every every pay or every month. So every pay, I would take something like, you know, $100 or 
are uh, sometimes maybe 150 or 200. I would take, uh, you know, that. And at the time, you could buy a T206 for that. Or you could buy an e-card for that. Or you could buy a lot of nice cards, you know, before 2020. And every pay, I would pay myself first. I would invest that money. And then I would go on to eBay or Facebook or wherever. And I would purchase myself a nice vintage card for $100 or 150 whatever my budget was at that time. And you could do the same thing with every, whatever budget you have. And then if you don't have enough to buy the cards you want, you know, sometimes you'll skip a pay and uh, you'll save up and double up and get that twice as expensive card that you want. Or maybe you go a month or two months and you get that really big card. But you pay yourself first, invest that, get, in, get that going for your future, for your family. And then you take that other second stipend and you start slowly building up your card collection. Another thing that I like to do when it comes to a little more modern cards is uh, I like to buy sevens. Sevens are so much cheaper than eights, nines, and tens. But most of us can't tell much of a difference. In, in a vintage card, a seven is a beautiful card. I'm talking even in the 60s, 70s. A seven is a beautiful card. And if you're on a budget and you're, you're, you're a collector and you're not looking for long-term value where you want to sell a 10 for $10,000 or $100,000, I suggest you buy sevens. They're beautiful cards. Get a nice centered seven. So I just thought that I would share with you, you know, how I do it and how I've uh, amassed a very large and, uh, you know, pretty nice uh, vintage collection over the years. And uh, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, that's just what I did. So as always, I want to thank you for watching.